Welcome to Retro Bassin. I'm sitting here with an old school Fenwick Eagle tackle box that I just picked up at a local flea market. Stick around as we crack this thing open. You guys are gonna flip out. It is literally packed to the gills with old, vintage, and discontinued baits. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. What is going on, Bassin Buds? Welcome to Retro Bassin. No, today we are not doing a little roadside fishing expedition. Actually, I'm heading down to Wimberley, Texas. I've got to go pick up a, a desk that we picked out a few weeks ago at the Wimberley Market. And while I'm there, I'm going to peruse this spot to see if I can find any old vintage tackle. So the first stop is going to be to go see my buddy Bill who is an old school cat like me. And what he does is he's a picker and he goes out and gets different, honestly, old discarded farm parts, barn wood, and he converts them into literally the most awesome lights you guys have ever seen. <laughs> so Bill's store is called Back From The Past. And I swear to God, every time I come here, I spend <laughs> like an hour and hundreds of dollars. So how long have you been building lights now? 20 years. Okay. Yeah, a long time. You were doing the glass for a while, right? You said. Uh, and then, and then, you, or you were doing, and then you got into lights. Yeah, I, I, I'm into lights pretty heavy. Well, like you can see, I've sold like four or five lights since you've been standing. There. I know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, though. I love that. Where'd you get that piece of wood? Picked it up off the ground out here. Okay. <laughs> I did. A man bought a booth and he was throwing stuff out. I said, Hey, I want that beam. It was all painted white. Okay. Cruddy, and the end of it was all busted. I cut it to where all the good wood is. What's this? This is a cedar for the back of a uh, trailer or a tractor. Okay. That they would go around in the field and yeah. spread fertilizer. Oh, wow. I got a wood base in it now. Okay. So somebody could use it for a trash can, dog food. Oh, wow. It used to have like a a wheel in there that would spin yeah and shoot the seeds out okay i might grab that that's really cool that's that's old yeah this is an old case piece man that's, that's a nice piece even though this isn't necessarily like a fishing tackle place you can tell this is right up my alley as sort of a old school junkie on anything if, if it's old if it's dirty if it's rusty i love it so our entire house is basically decorated with lights that bill himself made he's an old picker and he'll go around to different places and find cool artifacts turn them into lights and um <laughs> oh that's cool look at that that's an old upside down bucket huh can we turn that on can we turn that on that's cool if you want me to yeah Check it out. I think that's an old uh, old wooden plug there, huh? Right, this old session quarter. It's easy. I used to be fancy. And... Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Take it down. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Whoa, let me see that. South Bend. Yeah, we're, dude. Did you get that here? Uh huh, and here's a pin. Oh, wow, that's nice. So that's like old school spin cast rail. South Bend, number 11. And then check this thing out. Pin 9. It says LW Bash, so that must have been somebody's reel. That must have been somebody's reel. Dude, check that out. Did you get this both here? Mm-hmm. Man, where'd you get them? If you go straight down this road. Okay. Um, you go past it where the popcorn is. Yeah, yeah. 
You see them on the right. Okay. The Coke fill machine and that's all that. A, that's a nice. That'll work, man. Oh yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go walk around real quick. Uh, Bill's son gave me a hot lead on some fishing tackle just down the way. So we're gonna probably have to come back to Bill's to pick up a few things, and we'll see if we can find some vintage goodies. So it's been raining pretty hardcore the past couple days. So unfortunately this whole event being more of an outdoor affair, it looks like a lot of the vendors um, probably packed up early and uh, maybe either didn't come today or left. But uh, there's a few spots I wanna check just up yonder where I have seen some old tackle in the past and we will see if there's anything today, if anything's open. Okay, I spotted a couple of rods in the back here. You guys gotta check out this. I mean, there's, this there's is an old school rack of, of so, I see four combos that, when they send their these suckers have to be like 50 years old plus. Check out these four. So that is an antique reel of some sort on an old, old rod. Oh wow, look at that. He just collected over a span of about six, seven, eight years. Okay. Hit garage sales, pawn shops, flea markets. He would just see old rod and reels, and so he started buying them. In addition to pocket knives and okay. And <laughs> oh, that's all. Any more fishing tackle anywhere in here? Uh, there's some in that room in there. That way, there's a little bit more, and this way, there's a little okay, bit more. Okay, cool. <laughs> So I heard there's a little bit of tackle this way. Look what I just spotted, guys. Two really old school tackle boxes. This one I think is a Plano. This one is an old Rebel, which for the Rebel guys out there, they're gonna love this. I don't know if these are empty or not, so we'll take a quick look to see if anything's inside. So it's an old Plano 8606 box, and this one is a Rebel. I've actually got one of a very similar box to this. So which one are we gonna check out first? Oh, this is kind of heavy. Oh, that's actually a really good sign. So what does this say? $45, new reel inside. I got a feeling there's gonna be more than a reel in here. There's a few more things in here. So what do we have here? <laughs> Some old school casting plugs. Oh, these are actually, I need these for the kids. Um, I used to go through these a ton when I was younger and these are actually a little bit harder to find these days. Oh, so there is a new reel in here. And that is a new old reel, man. So it is a Daiwa, what is that? AG 1605XB. Honestly, this might be a buy just for the reel itself. So it says this was $10.99 back in the day from looks like uh, Academy Sports. I don't know what year this thing came out, but you can tell by that yellow package, this is not a not a new reel. That's that's pretty nice. Okay. Some nice line. What do we have here? Some Norton's lures. Some hoagies. Some original strand that doesn't look too, too old. That's pretty cool. I have to think about that. That's a nice box though, and honestly in, in pretty darn good shape. If you went to the store today, you couldn't probably get this box alone for 45 bucks, much less with a, a new reel in it. But I'm real excited about this thing. Oh. Okay, so this is a Rebel 910, is the uh, not model number. And there's a little note here. It says, $65 loaded. <laughs> I'm curious to see what the definition of loaded is, but it feels pretty heavy. Ah, this is what I love about picking. Just, I'm ready to crack this open. I have no idea what is in here. 
Dude. Okay, hold on. Let's check this out. <laughs> okay, so let's start on this side. I see some old school lures that looks like an old baby Lucky 13. Wow. A rebel we are. This little bomber slab spoon, okay. And there's a nice whopper stopper hellbender in like a black shore minnow color. Okay. There's a reel in the bottom of this one too. This looks like, what kind of reel is this? This is a Daiwa AG 1655. That thing looks to be in pretty good shape. It's got the old school trigger as well. Looks like some line and other gear. So what do we have here? A little mirror lure. And I don't know that I know this model of mirror lure. I see a little blade on the back. That's unique. It's 51MR21. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at that. The old weed wing. Man, I've been looking for one of these for quite a while. i got to be honest with you. That's awesome. That's an old bait. Um, I think this came out from... Uh, is this Burke? I don't know. I don't know. I forget. Um, what do we have here? A nice old spinner bait that looks like a okay, an old cotton cordell spinner bait. A couple little spoons. Ooh, there's a nice rebel. Sort of a deep we are. See a bomber. Another bomber. Look at that. Oh, then that's the old screw tail, actually. So that rear hook is screwed in there. That's actually a very old bomber right there for that Model A. Uh-oh, look at this. That's a little bagless action, isn't it? I can't actually read the, the bottom of it, but that is definitely an old school bagley. And look, there's another one. Ooh. Okay, so there's a, a DB3 bagley. Those two bagleys alone are probably worth the cost of the box, to be honest with you. Oh, that's an old head, I think. That's an old head and crankbait. Is it? What is that? Yep, head and deep six. Sort of a little bit of discoloration on it, but that's an old head and crankbait there. And there's a nice pose super seater. Wow, that's awesome. And a little Arbocast. <laughs> Look at that. Weedless jitterbug. Very cool. Ooh, check out these guys. <laughs> Old school lawn chairs. Remember these? Five bucks. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I would do with that, but that is right up my alley. Back in the day when like going to a uh, soccer game or hanging out in your backyard was just so much simpler. That's awesome. That's a that's a good looking chair. I think I see more fishing rods just ahead. So here's another little cache of looks like I don't know eight or ten rods. I see a couple in here that look pretty old. Some mostly spin cast rods. Uh oh. Check this out. <laughs> this is an old Fenwick Eagle satchel. Wow, that's a good looking box. And what is in there? That looks like a ton of crankbaits. Let's check it out real quick. Oh wow, look at all those. Those look almost clean. And on the back, I, I think I saw something. Yep, I did, okay. Check this out. Color selectors, guys. Oh, holy smokes, dude. Oh my God, look at those. Those are hidden tiny torpedoes in 
I think that's every color selected color that they made. I think there was a kit that they had back in the day that I don't have. Um, oh my God. More color selectors, more color selectors, top waters. Yep. Okay, this one's coming with. <sighs> that might be the pick of the day, Bass and Buds. Holy cow. I'm kind of glad I waited on that Rebel Tackle Box. Um, I just negotiated this thing down to 45 bucks. So when we get back to the studio, I will rip this sucker open. We'll see if I made a good purchase, but I'm pretty sure I made a great purchase. Back in the studio after a little trip down to Wimberley, Texas to the Wimberley Market Days. Unfortunately, we had to get out of there um, sort of in short order. The rain started coming in and I ended up bagging up the camera and doing a few last stops before I had to grab my desk and get on the road back to the old retro ranch. But we are back in the studio and I do want to show you the one tackle box that ended up buying today. Overall in the day, I spent $65 at the Wimberley Market Days. I picked up this tackle box, which I think you guys saw me uh, grab right before the rain came in. And then I had one more purchase that, honestly, I'm still kind of reeling about. So the tackle box itself is a two-sided Fenwick tackle box. This thing looks used, but boy, it looks like it's very lately used. And it is a Fenwick Eagle satchel. It's got two different sides to it, and we'll crack open, I guess, the top side first. So as far as what is in here, I'll see if I can set this thing up without everything falling out. This thing is chocked full of old vintage baits that for the most part look relatively unfished. So we'll start uh, top to bottom, left to right, and I'll see what we got inside here. So first things first, I see a pair of uh, Bill Lewis rattle traps. These are the half ounce size and that looks like the um, what is that called? The Sarchus Smoky Joe, I think. Those are actually really nice. Um, good old school rattle to those and a pair of two of those right out of the gates. Moving on down, it looks like I see a, another uh, half ounce rattle trap in a chrome blue pattern. And this nice little quarter ounce rattle trap in the old Smoky Joe color. I love that color. So right out of the gates, four really nice old school rattle traps. Oh, actually, I think there's like a ton of rattle traps in here. So we've got two more, and these, by the way, all look like genuine rattle traps. Sometimes you can kind of get some knockoffs. These all look like legit Bill Lewis lures to me. If I can untangle these. Okay, so there is a half ounce rattle trap in the Smoky Joe color. That one's pretty sweet. And another half ounce in the old Bleeding Shad. Man, okay, so that is awesome. Just rattle trap central. I, I probably have $45 worth of rattle traps right here. Forget everything else. So here's yet another one in the old Chartreuse and black. And another one. So there's four of those bad boys. That's pretty cool. And on the bottom row, okay. So I see here we've got uh, two of them. These are both half ounce model. Looks like that is a Tennessee Shad. Honestly, all of those look pretty much unfished. Okay, so we've got a little crankbait here. Um... I don't know if that's a Norman or a Bandit. I will leave it up to you guys to determine. But it probably is one of the two. Sort of like a Bandit size, but it's got those really close eyes like a Norman. So I'm not sure if that's a Norman or a Bandit. And here's another one. Same body profile, but it's in a more of a square bill design. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think these are. I'm guessing it's one of the two of those, but again, I could be wrong. Two 
two more of what it looks like the same brand of crankbait. So that to me, I don't know if you guys can sort of see that lateral line, but I've seen that lateral line on a bandit before. So I'm wondering if these are old school bandits. Hmm. And there's another one in Fire Tiger with a couple of really close eyes. That's a nice little, I don't know, what is that? Quarter ounce, three eighths ounce crankbait? That'll work. And two more on the bottom here. That is a really nice color. Look at that. That is like a baby bass, but sort of a faded baby bass color. Awesome, and <laughs> I got two of those. So two rows in of, I think, eight. I'm already gonna say this was a good buy. <laughs> uh, here is another crankbait. I don't know what that is. That looks sort of rebel-ish to me, but I don't really know. And here we go. Now the crankbait, that part, that color pattern here, this one does look very Bill Norman-ish to me. No eyes, sort of that Bill Norman crawfish looking pattern. Hmm. And another one, sort of a baby bass, but a clear baby bass color. And then down the bottom. Okay, I'm starting to think these guys are Normans. What do y'all think? Looks like in a sort of a gray shad color. And two of them. What's cool about whoever owned this box is when they found a lure they liked, they got a few of them. And you know me, that's what I love. I kind of hate to have just one of something because I do really want to fish with every lure that I get. I don't just collect them, I cast them. And if I've got one, I'm a little bit more nervous for losing that thing. So what do we have here? So this, at first glance, looks like a jitterbug, but I'm looking at that unbranded lip, and I think that's a knockoff. So that could be one of those uh, producers type baits. I see some hula popper looking things in here, and I'm guessing these are probably gonna be knockoffs as well. All right, these guys are all tangled up. I'm not gonna be able to get these apart. But there we go. So there is a sort of a hula popper in a green shad. There's one in a black. And then sort of a yellow shore minnow. And these are all knockoffs. So these are not original uh, hula poppers, but pretty cool just the same. Okay, so here's a couple crankbaits. I do know what brand these are. You can tell by the old Pac-Man eyes. So here's a Pose crankbait. I don't know what model it is though. So that is unique. It, it's sort of Super Cedar-esque, but it's definitely got a sort of a weird pointy nose to it. Interesting. And there's another one that has a really kind of cool, almost chartreuse uh, shine to it, doesn't it? So I don't know what model those are, guys. If you do know, drop a comment down below. But it says, it says pose on the bill. So these are definitely old school red cedar pose. Okay, so here we go. This looks like a Bill Norman deep diver of some sort, doesn't it? Pretty good looking crankbait. And one more, yeah, so these are all definitely Normans. So maybe those shallow ones I saw earlier are, are Normans too. Maybe they're not bandits, I don't know. And all that is literally only the first half of the baits that were in here, which is crazy. Now what caught my eye about this particular box were some of the colors that I saw from I feel like I was 20 feet away, and you can tell a color selector palette from probably a mile away. So this thing is chock full of 
a bunch more really cool baits that we will start with. I see some color selector baits, which is what drew me to the box. I see some jerk baits. I see some top waters and I see some spoons as well. So first things first, I see a couple of bomber long A's. These are nice and these are definitely original bombers. So there is one, that's a pretty cool color. I don't know the name of that color, but I've seen it before. It's a chartreuse-ish um, sort of side, green top, orange belly. Actually, I don't even see chartreuse, never mind, I'm lying. That's just green and uh, green and orange, but that's still a pretty cool looking color. Bomber Long A. There's another one in sort of a silver with an orange belly. Woo! And a nice chrome blue Bomber Long A. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I did not have a ton of time to look at this box as I had to get out of the rain, but man, I'm so glad I did not pass up on this thing. So there's a nice uh, gold chrome Bomber Long A. Almost a color selected color, right? That's like a black and purple. That's pretty wild. I don't know when would you would uh, use that. And then this one almost has some saltwater hooks on it, but a almost like a yellow white uh, bomber. That's wild. Okay, heading on down here, I see what looks like sort of a Zara spook type bait. I am pretty sure that is a Bill Norman topwater. I don't know the name of that, but I've got a feeling that's what that looks like to me. It's almost an intermediate size. It's smaller than the standard Zara Spook, but it's bigger, definitely thicker than the Zara Puppy. But that's pretty cool. Okay, and now we're getting down into the juice. Ooh. So these are some Cotton Cordell CC Shads, I believe, in the color selector pattern. Back in the day, they had a ton of color selector kits where you would get one kind of lure and it would come in, I think it's the five or six main color selector colors. So this obviously came out of one of those kits. There's a color selector orange, a color selector chartreuse, There's a really cool one, look at that. Color selector, blue and black. What a weird color, huh? There's a color selector, purple and sort of gray. And last, sort of a flow red. So those are the five colors that this must have come in. That's a really cool kit and of all the different color selector uh, lures that you can still get, this Cotton Cordell is pretty rare. So you can see it does say CC Shad on the bill. Hope I'm not messing that up. So that's what that bait is. I don't know that that thing suspends, but that looks like a sweet little crankbait, doesn't it? Okay, so getting into some more color selector stuff. Oh, here's another group of, this looks like six colors of the Head and Tiny Torpedo. Man, I have been scouring eBay for, it feels like a couple years, honestly, to try to find a full kit of these. Occasionally you'll see one or two pop up or you'll see something that's like just crazy expensive. But here it is, this is a head and tiny torpedo. You can see that it says tiny torpedo on the bottom there. And this is in that color selector palette that must have been, again, a kit back in the day. So there's chartreuse. That purple and gray. Orange. Ooh, green, I like that. Man, I don't even care what the color selector says. I might throw that color, that looks wild. There's that flow red. 
And this one, blue with a black belly. Ooh, that's another one. Boy, I think I've got to do another color selector episode. It's been a hot minute since I, I had that thing out. And at this point, I've got enough lures. I could probably do a full day with hard baits, everything from like deep diving crankbaits to top water with the color selector. But, but that might be my favorite one. I just, man, I love that color. Okay, so I see some crankbaits here. It looks like some little minnow baits. I don't know if these are Rapalas or knockoff Rapalas. That's not, that's kind of a weird color, almost like a green back. Here's more of the standard silver and black. Yeah, I can't tell if these are actual Rapalas or, or knockoffs. They might be knockoffs. That lip looks a little bit funky to me. Still a good looking bait though. Really nice. So three of those guys. And we've got some spoons. I don't know what the names of these are. Um, I'll have to look it up. These look like maybe Lord Jensen spoons perhaps. Uh, I don't know what the name of that is. It's kind of a light spoon. I almost feel like that's like a salmon trolling spoon. You can see how thin it is. That one is really tough to cast because that's not gonna dig down in the water column nearly enough for a cast-in situation. So these are probably trolling spoons of some sort. Got another crankbait here. Looks like the same brand as that other one that I saw. And there's something on the lip. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll have to see if my old eyes can read it. What does that say? I don't know what that says. Yeah, I can't read that. I'll have to look at that later. But I don't think that says Rapala, though. I'm pretty sure. Here we've got some jointed minnows. Sort of Rapala-esque in a couple different colors. Both a perch, chartreuse back, and then a silver back. Ooh, some more color selector stuff in here. Okay. So this is not the CC Shed. This, I think, is a Mr. Twister product that also had the color selector on it. I don't know what the name of this is. Oh, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so the stamping on this guy, this is definitely a Mr. Twister. And those things that I thought were Rapalas, I think those are actually Mr. Twister brand because it's very similar um, stamping on the bill. But that's a color selector in that flow red. What's cool about it is it doesn't matter who made the lore. If they were color selected, they had the same, you know, six colors. There's that purple and gray. That would work. And a little, uh, little chartreuse action. So these actually look like they've been fished a little bit, unlike 90% of the stuff that's in here. What do we have here? Some spinners. And lastly, what do we have here? Okay, so this is a Dazzler spoon. I think this is made by uh, Glenn L. Evans, if I recall. It's a really weird spoon. It's got a really wide head on it and a thinner body. I've never actually cast one of these. I own a couple. I just I have so many spoons, and I don't fish spoons nearly as much as I used to. But this is a wild one. I'm kind of curious to see what this would cast like. It's definitely thick enough that you could do some casting with that bait. So this is one thing that I picked up and I'll put this off to the side. The rain's starting in, I've gotta put the camera away and it was actually in that same shop where I saw a lot of the old reels, that Rebel Tackle Box that I took a pass on, I just didn't think it had enough in it. Anyway, in the corner, right before I left, I saw this. It is a brand new rod. You can see that it still actually has the plastic on the cork handle. And what rod this is, I'll flip it so you can see it, this is a Daiwa Procaster. This is the exact rod that my buddy Jay had all through high school. So I know this is a very old rod. I don't know what year this thing came out, sometime in the mid 90s, but it says this is a Procaster SST from Daiwa. It is a metalized IMB graphite pr 701 2rb It is a pretty cool looking um, 
rod. This thing has clearly never been fished. It's a one-piece rod. And what's interesting about this particular model is it's got, I swear, I think one of the thinnest tips I've ever seen. I don't know what kind of baits I would throw on this. Probably something pretty delicate. But <laughs> when I saw this, holy smokes. And um, I did a little bit of negotiating on this rod and you're gonna flip out when I tell you what I spent for it. But this unused rod from 1994, I got it for 20 bucks, <laughs> which is wild. And I think the reel that I'm actually gonna pair it up with is a reel that I've had for a number of years that used to be my number one reel. And this is an old Daiwa, I think this is an old Procaster. I fished this thing so much that I've worn the paint off it. Uh, yep, it is a Daiwa Procaster of some sort. This wasn't my first ever bait casting reel, but this was definitely my first Daiwa. And I loved, loved, loved this reel. I just have not had a home for it on Retro Bassin because I haven't had the right rod. Honestly, I think it's a little bit too modern for some of those five foot, six inch pistol grip rods. But this, oh, this is going to be probably my new favorite sort of medium light combo. So check that out. Oh man, that fits perfectly. That looks perfect. Yeah, buddy. Okay, I've got to figure out what I'm going to fish with this. This is definitely not a super heavy rod. Um... I've been on a bit of a tear with crankbaits, and I've gotten some crankbaits that are more finesse-ish. This might be a good combo for those. I could see myself throwing some of the smaller spinner baits on here, a la the Okie Bug, the Jensen Extractor, stuff like that. Um, I don't know that I'd throw top water on this with this long handle. I think it's probably too light for a lot of soft plastics. Maybe I could do some Senko fishing with this. Um, something like that, sort of a light worm rod, but I probably wouldn't use this for any real heavy stuff. But that is it. So that's my day today at the Wimberley Market. This and this, 65 bucks, all said and done. In addition to that, I got to pick up a desk that I've been waiting to get from there and also stop by to see my good buddy, Bill Barry. You know, really cool guy. What I love about Bill is he's not necessarily a fisherman, um, but what I thought was kind of cool and the reason I wanted to show him on this channel is anybody who's got an appreciation for the old stuff I love. And Bill is, uh, he, he would be a great lure hunter. You can tell. He's a great picker. He goes out and finds this really cool old stuff, stuff that people throw away, and he turns it into art. And that's what I love. That is so in the vein of everything Retro Basin. Just in case you guys ever happen to be in Wimberley, Texas around Wimberley Market Days, I will drop Bill's information down below. Great dude. His son Travis is a huge lore collector as well. In fact, before the rain started coming in, uh, Travis and I were rapping about old rods and reels and engines and you name it. So uh, another uh, guy after my own heart. So until next time, Bass and Buds, keep on picking. And definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.